on the screen. Hello uh, from my sewing room on this, uh, apparently July 21st. I don't know how we got this far into July, but here we are. Uh, it's Leah here at my sewing room, joining you on Facebook and YouTube Live this afternoon for Tools and Techniques Thursday, um, where we where we deep dive into a topic that I could talk about for far longer than you might want to watch. <laughs> We'll try and keep it uh, sweet, get you the info that you need on today's topic, and uh, let you give it a chance to go give it a try. Um, we're going to do one of my absolute favorite techniques today. Um, kind of encompasses a big, broad range of things, um, but there's some, there's some pretty cool 3D things in behind me. And we're going to be talking about freestanding lace and freestanding applique today. And some of the cool things that you can do with um, both of those techniques. Um, so freestanding lace, just what it sounds like, looks like lace. Um, this, when it is all said and done, is uh, just thread. Um, there is, it's magically made uh, using your embroidery machine um, instead of like hand tatting lace, which is how lace was traditionally made, which is very slow and time consuming. Uh, machine made lace is fantastically perfect, uh, can be any color that you want, and can be all sorts of fun, cool shapes. Um, so we're going to be talking about lace today. Um, we'll also be talking about freestanding applique and kind of the differences between those two things. So freestanding applique has applique fabric in at some point. So where my bird is completely just thread, um, this is a tiny little roof piece for a birdhouse or a side panel on a birdhouse. And the blue fabric in the background here is fabric. So if you're starting your adventures into making things that are freestanding lace, um, straight lace, uh, definitely easier to start with. Um, designs will have to be labeled as freestanding lace designs. Um, otherwise, they're not really assembled properly to be a freestanding thing all by themselves at the end. So we're going to be talking about OESD designs today specifically because OESD makes absolutely stunning lace. And when you're looking at lace designs, there's usually a tiny little code at the end of the name that says FSL. That means freestanding lace. So if a design has FSL at the end, it means it is designed to be uh, full on lace. If it doesn't have FSL, it might say FSA, which that's super tiny, not necessarily uh, visible. FSA means freestanding applique. And sometimes, depending on the type of project you're working on, your project might have some freestanding lace and some freestanding applique. So, the design collection that I'm playing with today is uh run away <laughs> it was in my hands a moment ago um chelsea was grabbing something off of it anyway we're gonna be talking birdhouses there it is magic of television it comes back to me <laughs> um i'm gonna be making um two of the pieces from uh the daisy birdhouse collection from oesd and this makes a full stand up 3D birdhouse. It is adorable. So adorable. Um, and you make it the first time following the thread instructions or make it whatever colors you want. Um, we do have one mostly uh, made already that is not assembled. So we'll talk through um, how to assemble some of the things that are more structured than just like lace ornament. So uh, my best suggestion for lace, um, start making lace early if you're going to make lace for Christmas, um, lace ornaments fit in Christmas cards and they slide in the mail real super easy. Um, and then you can make new ornaments every year. It's so much fun to give these as Christmas gifts for those people who don't need a full gift gift, but it's nice to throw something in there. Um, this is what I've been giving, uh, to my friends, kids for Christmas for years is just a new lace ornament every year, um, to add to their collection. And I make kind of whatever I want in whatever colors I want. And then divvy them out amongst um, the friends and cousins and all those great people. 
So, uh, see a comment out there. <laughs> oh, she was afraid to start with lace and now she's addicted. That's a pretty safe, safe, reasonable thing to say about lace. <laughs> um, it's very enjoyable to make the magic happen and then have this really cool 3D thing at the end or 2D, whatever the case may be. So when you're getting started with uh, freestanding lace or freestanding applique, having the right stabilizers in your hands will be critical. Um, there's two, two most common, I'll talk about the other, the other one in a moment. I'm on the wrong camera again. Sorry guys. Um, most common stabilizer that you're going to start with, with freestanding lace is called Aquamesh. This is from OESD. It is a wash away stabilizer. Um, Aquamesh is very, very strong and, um, depending on how dense your lace is, usually one layer of this and you will also want some badge master. So badge master is another wash away stabilizer. Um, it's much heavier, much firmer. Um, but what badge master will do for you, um, badge master isn't super strong. It will perforate if you were to hoop with only badge master. Um, Badge Master is going to give you a stiffness when you wash out your lace. So um, if you want really soft lace that you could stitch on to something like a shirt uh, to embellish it or a wedding dress or, I don't know, your backpack, whatever you want to add lace to after um, you make lace, if you were wanting to use it somewhere else, you'd wash out all that starch. Um, but if you want lace that's going to stand up and hang nicely on a Christmas tree or be a birdhouse that hangs as a 3D structure, um, you need a layer in there that is going to provide stability over the lifespan of your project. So Badge Master is the key. Um, it is essentially just like paper starch. You wet it, it gets all goopy, um, but then it, when it hardens, you get nice crisp lace. So Aquamesh and Badge Master are the magic keys to lace. You want a roll of each. Generally, when I get started with lace, I start with uh, aqua mesh in my hoop. And just big enough to fit the hoop is usually enough. And you want to make sure that you're working um, in a hoop that's just, just a big enough to hold your project. Um, I'm actually going to stitch two pieces today because one is applique and one is... Um, freestanding lace on its own. So we'll talk about both. Um, so I'm going to do both in one hooping. Um, but if you're new to this, really your safest bet is to do a single hooping with just the single piece. So this, both of these would actually fit in a smaller hoop. This is a five by seven hoop, um, but both would fit in a four by four on their own. So both ways will work. Um, other projects, some of the bigger, newer things in OESD's lineup might call for other stabilizers. So there's uh, instructions available uh, for every design collection from OESD. Um, some of them call for things like fiber form or uh, stable stick cutaway. Oftentimes there's another layer in there that will provide uh, stability and structure to the fabrics. Um, things that have fiber form in them might be something like the rocket ship from Scissor Tail Stitches which um, big enough to like throw like a football. Not that I've done that with my rocket ship, but I'm pretty tempted. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a variety of options, <laughs> but yes, uh, we're going to start with aqua mesh in the hoop. And then the piece of badge master really just needs to be big enough to cover the area you're stitching in your hoop. So for me, it doesn't quite cover the entire hoop, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to start with that. Um, freestanding lace. The other thing you want to make sure you're doing, uh, because you'll see both sides of your project. If it's spinning in your Christmas tree or hanging on your birdhouse, uh, you'll want to make sure that you're matching your top thread and your bobbin thread. Not always the case with embroidery, but definitely the case um, with lace. So... Maybe we'll get loaded up here. Got machine turned on. Got orange thread in the top and orange thread in the bobbin. It's 
it matches my hair and that cracks me up. So that's, that's how we're rolling today. I think that's how Chelsea picked the thread for today's project. <laughs> She's nodding. <laughs> we can see her hands on the side of the video. <laughs> Chelsea's just, just working on assembling. So pre-assembling parts of the pieces so we can uh, do the final tricky bits of assembly on the birdhouse. Um, so I'm going to load both designs so we can stitch through both. We'll do the lace first. So that is my little lace bird. And then I'm going to select add. Um, today I'm stitching on a Brother NS2750D. Uh, so this machine has a 5x7 hoop, which means you can stitch a whole lot of the freestanding lace. Maybe not all of the designs will fit, um, but lots of them will. And then I'm going to also stitch the home tweet home sign. I'll put some space in between those and take out my whole, almost my whole five by seven hoop. I'm actually just going to go through and change the colors on these so they're a little bit easier to see. So onboard your machine if you're having trouble seeing the finishing stitches on a project where you want to make sure you're not going to be too close to your other project in the tube. Uh, you can use that color designer. Some, sometimes the lace comes in all white and it's really hard to see what you're doing on screen. You can stitch it all, all white. The machine, the machine just gives you suggestions. So I'm going to hit end edit and embroidery. Um, because I'm stitching on just stabilizer, there's no need to get too excited about um, placement in the hoop, unless you're adding more pieces in later. Um, but really, at this point, I'm ready to not pop my hoop out of the hoop. I should make sure that's tight enough before they get going. We don't need we don't need an embroidery disaster day. Those are no fun. I don't need it jumping for freedom. So in here, uh, my bird is going to stitch first. It is all one color. It is eleven minutes of stitching, and then the sign is another about fifteen minutes of stitching. So if you guys are in for the the full. The full run of embroidery today will do it all. Well, mostly we'll get as far as putting the applique in the hoop. That's the part that I want to show you guys. The rest of the stitching happens like regular stitching. So we'll get going and just hold that badge master down in place while the first few stitches happen. camera around a whole bunch so you guys can watch the lace happen it's a dense network of stitches in the background of your lace so this is the background fill that it's stitching right now it'll go through and add a nice satin stitch outlines afterwards and the details for the wings so lots and lots of thread in lace, but not a lot of effort on your part. Watching lace happen is the most fun. Very enjoyable. <laughs> Chelsea's got in her hands and work on that. Well, while we wait for this to stitch. Okay. While we wait patiently for our project to stitch, um, other tools that you're going to want um, when you're assembling something like a lace birdhouse. 
uh, button clips are tiny little clips that will clip on and hold things in place as you assemble. Um, OESD makes their lace with um, eyelets and buttonets that need to go together. And as well, you'll want alligator clamps. So alligator clamps are uh, the magic little tool that has a tiny little opening where you can pull that little buttonet through the hole. Hopefully this is visible from the top camera. Sort of. So right now this is the back side of the middle of the birdhouse. Um, there's two different ways to assemble. Either the buttonets are all on the outside. If that's how Chelsea started assembling this. So we're going to go from the outside through the eyelet with the alligator clamp. It's a little bit of a wiggle if it's really tight. Um, might need a little bit of water to soften it. And then we're going to grab that buttonette with the alligator clamp. And, we'll pull it back. and if those are not stained put when you get them through, that's where the uh, button clips come in to hold those in place for you. Not such an issue right now, but Chelsea's working on the pointed roof. It's, it's a little fussier. fussier, a little bit trickier. Um, there's always instructions with every uh, every building of which order it goes together and which order will be the best to assemble. Something like this, it will be much easier to put my roof on before assembling my side. Know that from experience. So there is. Oh no, there's one more panel. That's only that's only a pentagon. We need a hexagon. Not done. <laughs> we'll make an almost all the way around birdhouse and then put a roof on. Close it up as we go. And the last piece we'll put on. Uh, besides the bird and home sweet home, which need a little piece of dowel to attach, will be the floor. Sometimes the floors on these buildings have uh, uh, spots for tea light to go through. But this birdhouse hangs, so it is a solid black floor. Switch you guys back to the embroidery channel for a moment. See the progress on our bird. So uh, the big eyelid at the bottom is for your dowel to hold your bird onto the front of your bird house. Now we're getting into the detail stitching on the outer part of the bird. have almost all the way around. Should I hand those back? Other fun freestanding things we have behind us. Little box of designs. The favorite part about lace is I can do so many other things while it stitches. <laughs> This is a good multitasking activity. <laughs> so, other fun things that fall into the freestanding world of, of fun. Uh, freestanding cowboy boots. You can have these made for next stampede. Those are those have applique. Like I said, the rocket ship. 
the freestanding barn is really, really, really adorable. Um, we, our store sample here in store, instead of using quilting cotton, we've used felt. So felt stitches really nicely in a lot of these houses and buildings. Uh, freestanding butterflies. Always, always great. I put little magnets on the last ones I made and put them on my mother-in-law's fridge. There's also things like freestanding napkin corners. You want fancy napkins for your for Thanksgiving dinner? There's instructions of how to place that lace on the edge of the, your um, napkins. Birds. Freestanding pumpkins. Always awesome. Totally awesome. That's the first stack. Christmas Village. You want to grab the Christmas Village. Uh, freestanding little houses. They're really cute. More freestanding pumpkins. Uh, there's been freestanding pumpkins every year. There's a like, really good pumpkin, pumpkin patch girl. They're all a little bit different. Um, the umbrella is so, so cute made with all lace. Part for the pen. Uh, not big enough to keep my head dry, um, but how cute would this be in a little girl's bedroom with her dolls? That would be a great little umbrella for like an 18 inch doll or even a Barbie. Big beach umbrella for a Barbie. So cute. So sweet. Uh, there's freestanding lace bowls. There's freestanding Mr. and Mrs. Claus. There's tea light wraps. Oh, this is one of my favorites. This is absolutely one of my absolute favorites. Um, freestanding tiaras and wands. Uh, this is instead of giving junky little plastic toys uh, for my daughter's sixth birthday in their grab bags or goodie bags, um, all the little girls got a tiara. It was a huge hit. Who doesn't want a lace tiara if they're very open? Um, freestanding bears. Freestanding doilies or like buildable buildable doilies. They assemble, they're cool. You can make them as big as you need for your table. Freestanding campers. Jessie's nodding. She needs this one. <laughs> uh, a couple more birdhouse styles. And then OESD has an epic collection of buildings. Um, they started, um, I don't even know how many years ago, <laughs> uh, they started making freestanding buildings for a village. So every year they add a new building to the village. Um, Last year it was a police station. This year it's a gas station. I've seen the sample. Um, it'll be coming out later this fall. We don't have the gas station yet. Um, but most of the Christmas Village, you can get a whole collection of Christmas Village or just buy the one building that you want. I mean, just a fire hall for my brother who has some fire fighting. Um, but you can make the bits and pieces that you want to make the whole village. And in the mix of villages, OESD's also started a Halloween village with like haunted houses and a, uh, like a gingerbread village, which is all like gingerbread house, candy pink, candy blue. It's adorable. So there's new buildings in that series each year too. In our stitch out here, we have a bird nearly assembled, nearly stitched. Just like that, we have a bird. Did you see what else I needed on this fabric? No. Oh. oh, okay. Then I know. I know what it needs. It needs some. It needs some help because it's going to be just a little. So I'm going to do the edge of this orange because I have orange. Ah. Uh, orange thread in my bobbin. 
So freestanding applique um, is going to be a little bit different um, because you need to add fabric at some point. So what I'm going to do here is just start with the stitch out on the side. And usually with freestanding applique, there will be a placement line for our fabric, and then a tack down line. And after the tack down line, we'll trim. And then it will come in and do the extra lettering on top of our applique and all the lace finishing details around the outside. So just the pieces that are actually lace will need uh, thread changes so that your lace matches on the back side. Won't matter so much what you do for bobbin thread through the detail stitching on top, but you could still still opt to change bobbin thread. I don't have matching bobbin thread for all the other colors I want to do, um, but that's okay. We'll start here with my placement line. So placement line done. Next thing that is going in the hoop will be our fabric for our applique. And you want to put applique fabric in the hoop when your hoop is flat on your table. So you don't impede anything. And then we're going to grab, um, grab the sticky roll of tape. One roll yesterday that was not sticky and one that was. Um, so to give my fabric a little bit of body and structure a little bit of interfacing on the back uh, generally i used fusible woven um, just knowing that this needs to stand sturdy outside um, not outside outside but needs to hang pretty firm i've got a piece of cutaway stabilizer in behind um, my fabric just gonna take that all down um, OESD has washaway tape and tearaway tape. Um, the washaway tape is lovely to work with in embroidery, like lace, because it will just wash out of the stitches and start having to pick it out later on. But my my piece of fabric is generous enough that it should be my tape should be well away of my stitching. So back into the machine and do my tack down line. Normally your tack down line would match your fabric, however, I'm rolling with orange today because that makes me happy. So OSD always does a double run on the tack down line. And you do need to trim fairly tight to that outer line when you go to trim. We'll take this back off the machine for a moment. And I can gently remove the tape. And then I'm going to trim my applique fabric without trimming any of the stabilizer. And we're going to trim, I'm um, using curved embroidery scissors, so they've got a curved tip on them. and right tight to that outer line of stitching. Each embroidery company and their digitizers are a little bit different. Sometimes you don't have to trim super, super tight. Um, it really should test because every, every brand is a little bit different. I don't want little blue fuzzies sticking out of my orange um, satin stitch at the end. Wipe that 
it's ready. We'll take this back to the machine and it's ready for a thread change. To start making our wording on our sign. Switch away from the orange and do. I think the blue I grabbed is going to show up. I'm going to do purple. So that was the applique part. We added the applique fabric in there. And now we'll continue on with the design. Looking at anything fun. Couple of jump stitches in there that we'll have to trim afterwards. Not a big deal. change for the home. We're going to go green. So many options. Or go with the color suggested in the pattern, but it's too late for that. That's not what I do. So, back in our construction project, uh, we've got six pieces of the roof assembled. They just need a final seam to come together, and uh, six pieces of building together. They just need a final seam to come together. So the eyelets for these are further up and in. So we'll start from the outside, make sure that this is going to line up. I'm going to work my way around to the loose end on both sides. If this happens where that pops back apart,
You won't need these once you're all the way assembled. They're not going to stay in there forever. Ooh, that sounded weird. If your machine sounds super weird while you're stitching, sometimes it's a good idea to just pause for a moment. Make sure that everything's still okay. I'm running out of orange bobbin thread. That's part of the issue. Might not finish. We might run out of bobbin thread before I'm done my project. She needed a she needed a quick tweet. Okay, let's go back to assembly. Detach the wedding clip to the next spot that I think might try and escape from me after I get it assembled. change on the machine. Start making a village. You can assemble one while you've stitched the next one. If you stitch them in the right order, you can start assembly while you're while you're still stitching. Now we're coming back into the lace portion of this little sign. Outer boundary is all lace. my way all the way around. Machine is pretty much out of bobbin thread. Needing some love. It is slightly jammed. So if this happens, let's do a tiny little bit of education as to what to do when things jam really quite epically on your machine. Um, I believe this jammed because it is pretty much out of bobbin thread and the bobbin is not sitting properly in the machine anymore. It jumped around. So 
Um, right now, this is stuck. I have loosened the hoop off the machine. Um, troubleshooting this. I'm going to take my needle thread out. I might be able to wiggle the hand wheel and get it to move, but not so much. Um, we might actually just have to get in there and trim some thread. So the end of the bobbin thread got caught on the bobbin. A little bit of a nest of, of lumps and bumps on the back of my embroidery right here. Um, as it ran out of bobbin thread, it caught on the bobbin. So, it doesn't always happen, but every once in a while, every once in a while things jump and are a little bit unhappy. So, you can slide the gray plate off. Just get rid of any other uh, stuck threads that might be in there. Take the bobbin case out, double check for any other debris. When the bobbin case goes back in on this machine and other brothers, a little white triangle needs to match with a little white dot so that the gray part of the, of the stitch plate sits in the right place. There's over 10 minutes of embroidery left. I'm going to leave that to finish another day so I don't have to wind a bobbin while we're live. But that's how you get on there. Uh, and knowing that this gem just a little bit, uh, my next step when I reload my bobbin will be to back up a little bit using the needle plus minus icon to travel through the design. And knowing that it's stitched for about 10, 15 stitches, uh, kind of wonky there as, as that bobbin thread caught, will back up about 20 stitches and it will be ready to carry on and rewind the bobbin we're off to a good start and ready to continue so um assembly of this we carry on going all the way around with um, the alligator clamps which i've set down again um the last little bit being get most of the roof on come down the side seam that we have open, we could start putting the floor in um, pretty soon so that as we get down to the bottom, we'll just have kind of that one seam line to assemble as we go. And then we will have a lovely little birdhouse. We'll grab some dowel for our bird, put him in front, and hang the sign below. So home tweet home. Super, super adorable and not hard. Um, lace looks intimidating, um, but in the big scheme of embroidery, it is one of the easiest things to try. Um, it's thread and wash away stabilizer. That's pretty much the magic to it. Um, well digitized lace is usually a very easy project to get into. So don't, don't hesitate to try it. And then when you're loving it, uh, start making... Um, buildings and villages and start with little Christmas ornaments um, as your starting point. Um, other things going on around here um, coming up uh, this fall if you want more education on embroidery and some hands on stitching time not lace um, but some other projects uh, we have an OESD event uh, being taught by an OESD educator here in store uh, September 30th and October 1st called Stitching in the Kitchen. So that's two days hands-on time. If you don't have an embroidery machine yet, but you're thinking you want one, give us a call. Uh, we're setting up our floor models in that class for you to give it a try. Uh, we'll have spectacular uh, pricing on machines uh, just for that event. And if you already have a machine and you just want more information, or you don't already have a machine and you just want more information on embroidery, uh, September 29th, uh, we've got embroidery essentials which is a one-day lecture demo here in store again with a fabulous OESD instructor joining us um, from their office to teach us all the good things with embroidery um, so there's going to be some good things there but there's more instruction and uh, there's some very cool things coming out um, over the next couple months embroidery wise so stay tuned for those we will get those um, shared out to you guys as soon as we get them in our hands. Um, if you want more information or want to give a machine a try, uh, give us a call here in store.
and we'll we'll help you find the perfect embroidery machine for what you want to stitch on. Um, if you already have a machine and you want some some assistance finding the right stabilizers for your projects, we're happy to help with that too. Um, other things going on in the store: uh, the new Bernina uh, K Facet Edition machines uh, that are launching this fall. Uh, there will be pre-order pricing on them available in our email newsletter on July 22nd. So watch for that if you're signed up for our e-news. If you are not signed up for our e-news, you should sign up for our e-news. You can go to our website, mysewingroom.ca, and click the sign up for our e-news. You can also put your birthday in there and then we send you a coupon every year on your birthday. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, but if you like today's video and you want more information, um, you want to learn more, you want to try some things, um, stay tuned. We do tools and techniques Thursday on Thursdays um, and all sorts of variable techniques. Uh, you'll find these videos in your Facebook feed um, or on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like, share with your friends uh, who this might interest uh, so more people can have fun. Thanks for joining me today. We'll